So one of the things that we use a lot in Java is known as a method. But there's a lot of kind of mystical keywords and magical words that we, we throw out there when we start talking about uh, methods. And I just want to uh, look at them. So let's actually just look at something basic. Let's look at our main method, the thing that we've been writing uh, pretty much at, since the start of the class. Public. static void main string args so we've been writing out this every time and the first part these two words right here public static these fall into what we call our visibility modifier now Public's more what really falls into visibility, but static kind of falls in as well. Uh, you know, where it kind of falls in line, uh, how many there are, and for our sake, at least in the beginning, this is where uh, all of this kind of falls in place. We're talking about a very specific kind of method. In our case, that's uh, open to everyone, and there's only one of it. So, again, it's how we start everything off. Uh, for our sake in this class, generally speaking, you will be safe with typing out public static first to everything. But then we get into this return type. Now, main uses what's known as a void return type, which means it does not return anything, meaning that you won't see a return statement. Now, if you've ever programmed in, say, for example, C, C actually has a return type, and it's always like return one, just to indicate that the program did run successfully. Java's a little higher up, a little more advanced. We don't need that. What we're saying is this method is not going to, you know, give it to anything else. It, once it's done, it is done. Don't worry about uh, the livelihood of it, I guess. But then we get sort of this main method portion, the main. Well, that is just my method name. I need to refer to it in some way. Uh, and the way we can look at a method is this is actually the same way we would treat a variable. If we look at a variable for a second, or if we look at uh, a more uh, built up method besides ours, this guy right here, this name is just my way as a programmer to refer back to it because what's going on is everything inside of these curly braces are instructions those instructions have to be stored for later use it's like we're writing a recipe so what happens when we design out a method is it actually goes sort of into memory that way I can use it for later. So when we write the main method, it goes into memory. When we write, say for example, uh, a method called sum, it goes into memory. Now one thing you're also going to notice is in this description I say a list of parameters. And again, one of those for the main method is string bracket args. Now later on in the semester we're going to look at what the string bracket means but that is just an array it's just a data type and all this args word right here is is it's just the variable that we're gonna call it we're gonna call this args and we can see that in action when we start looking at this method this method has two parameters two data types that we're going to throw out there. And notice how they're ints. I need some way to refer to them because I don't know what they are. Well, I'm just going to call them for the sake of this little baby version, uh, i1, i2. Again, I don't know what they are. They can be five. They could be, you know, Sasquatch. I don't care what they're called outside of my method. I only care about what they're called inside my method. And that's why, you know, I can work like this. We see the same thing actually uh, in a few other methods that we've learned about. So say for example math.random. Well math.random you might notice there's nothing inside the parentheses. It actually takes 
zero parameters. Well, something about something like uh, system dot out dot print hi. Well, this is a string, and there's only one string there. So guess what? That means that this actually only takes one parameter. Our made method that we've got going on here, you see that it has two, so guess what? This takes two parameters. We can actually put as many as we want. We can make a zero parameter method or we could make uh, you know, we could make an 80 parameter method. It doesn't actually matter how many we go about building. Now once we've built out our code, again you see we have this interesting thing. We have this return type going on here, int. This is to tell me that this is what I'm expecting out of this. Whenever I, I use this method, just like when we used math.random, we got a number from 0, 0.0 to 0 0.9. We were getting a double back. We're doing the exact same thing. This is telling me I'm going to get some number back. So if we think about invoking a method, that term invoking a method, just calling a method, typing out sort of the special word, just like we would a variable, the only difference is now I'm including sort of parentheses and the parameter. What I'm doing is I'm invoking the method. All of this gets passed. So this 5 and this 7, that 5 and 7, guess what? 5 is going to be I1, 7 is going to be I2. Those go into here. That's a 5 now, that's a 7 now. So 5 plus 7, return that value. That calc, again, that's going to be a 12. So guess what? That 12 comes back up here. This is 12 now. That because left to right association means I calculate all of this stuff first, then gets assigned to calculated value. And I can use variables. I don't have to use uh, literals like 5 and 7. I can s make it called x. Again, I don't care what it's called outside of my method. It's called x here. It's not called x here. I don't care. This is where it's going to be. Uh, evaluated. It gets evaluated first because it, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, kicks in. These parentheses, x becomes 5, y becomes 7. That in turn goes to my method in something known as passing by value, which we'll talk about in just a second.